We are excited to introduce to you Prophetic Edge, where we are going to be digging into the revelation of God's Word and what it looks like to walk in victory through the Word of God. Whenever God is ready to move in Scripture and bring victory to people, He always brings a fresh edge of revelation. It is such a joy to continue this whole idea, this series, this conversation on transition. Now, we've been talking about Moses, this mighty man of God who, in all the faiths of the world, the major faiths, Moses is a key player. When you talk about the Hebrew faith, Judaism, Moses is the central figure of Judaism, who is a revelation of the mind of God and of the law of God. When you look at Islam, Moses is actually spoken of in Islam. Um, He's not spoken of necessarily like we speak of him, but you see him there. And he is revealed as being a prophet and a figure. When you come to Christ and Christianity, he is a key player for us because Judaism is the foundation of Christianity. And here is Moses, who even in the New Testament, Moses shows up for us, which is different. He shows up in the New Wow, what a glorious thought that Moses and Elijah are with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And as we talk about transition, this Mount of Transition, this Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is in transition. And who shows up with him? Moses and Elijah, representing the word of God, Moses, and the power of God, Elijah, representing the covenant of the word with Israel and the covenant of power to deliver the covenants, the word, the glory of God. Now let's continue. Transition, the encounter of God. Every time as you continue in transition, there's going to be a divine encounter. Why? Because the process of transition, as God walks you through your own world and brings you into a place of healing and wholeness, new identity, new structure, new mindsets, new ways of thinking, the idea And the goal of transition is to bring you into a place where you have an encounter with God. Now, for every encounter you have in God, there may not be this road of transition. But for every great transition story, there is eventually going to be an encounter. Oh, so let's talk about his. Moses now, one of the most told stories in religion, is in Exodus chapter 3. And it says these words, And I love this verse, um, the passage I'm reading out of. One of my favorite Bibles is the Names of God Bible. And so I'm going to read it, and I want you to just hold on. Moses was taking care of the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. As he led the sheep to the far side of the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of Elohim. The messenger of Yahweh appeared to him as flames of fire coming out of a bush. Moses looked, and although the bush was on fire, it was not burning up. So he thought to himself, why is not the bush burning up? I must go there and behold this strange sight. When Yahweh saw that Moses had come toward the bush, Elohim called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses answered, here am I. Elohim said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because this place where you are standing is holy ground. I am the Elohim of your ancestors. The Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at Elohim. And Yahweh, Jehovah God said, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of the slave drivers. I know how much they are suffering. I have come to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land to a good land with plenty of room for every single person to dwell. It is a land flowing with milk and with honey. Where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites live. And I have heard the cry of the people of Israel. I have seen how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now go. 
I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you can bring my people out of Egypt. But Moses said to Elohim, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt? And Elohim answered, I will be with you. And this will be the proof that I sent you. You will bring the people out of Egypt. All of you will worship Elohim on this same mountain where I talk to you now. And Moses replied to Elohim, suppose I go to the people of Israel and say to them, Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What should I tell your people? Elohim answered Moses, Eya, who is Eya? This is what you must say to the people of Israel, Eya, who is Eya. What does that mean? Eya means I am. He said to Moses, tell my people I am that I am. Eya, El, Elia. What does that mean? He who has always been, he who always shall be, is with you and shall be with you forever. That entire passage is such a life-changing passage to me because when you read that passage, it speaks to you of the constancy, the continual nature, the glorious nature, the powerful hand of God. It speaks that God never stops thinking about us no matter how long we may have been in bondage. It speaks that God has a plan even when we are ignorant of his plan. It speaks that God is in control even when We feel like the world is in chaos. It speaks that God is going to fulfill his covenant even when we have begun to doubt his word. Moses looked at this time of transition, now when we have the divine encounter, Moses who has received his new friendships, Moses who has received his new identity, Moses who has received a new perspective, now God is burning in a bush. How many times in your life have you seen something that you could not understand and you thought it was God, but you couldn't figure it out? I think every human on the planet has had divine moments where the divine nature of God has interrupted your life. I think every person, I don't care where you are on the planet, I don't care whether you know God fully or not, I don't care if you were Buddhist or Muslim, Hindu or Sikh. I don't care if you were atheist, unbeliever, whoever you are, he loves humanity. And because of his great love for humanity, somewhere in your life, the unexplainable stood up in front of you. And when that which you cannot explain begins to stand in your presence, it is God burning in a bush. God let Moses see something he could not explain. You may say you don't know God and you've never met God and you weren't raised in church. I get that. I'm not trying to make you believe all the scriptures I believe, but I want you for one moment to stop your world and ask yourself, have you ever had a moment in your life when you looked and said, I cannot explain this? When you knew that night that you had drank too much or you had smoked too much or you were somewhere you shouldn't have been and you were trying to make it back home and you opened your eyes in your driveway and realized you drove high or drunk and you should have killed somebody or been dead yourself. But here you are sitting at home and you ask yourself, how did I get here? You were in the middle of a burning bush and didn't know it. When you stumbled and fell down those steps because you tripped or you fell or you were under the influence of something and you didn't break your neck. That was a burning bush calling your name. When you were in that abusive relationship and it went too far and someone put their hands on you and it was a horrible night and you thought it was over. They were going to stab you or shoot you or strangle you. You don't know how you got out of that house, but you survived and you have been so glad that you didn't die that night, but you never thought about the fact it was a burning bush. God was there and you didn't know it. When you were in the car that time and your parents were driving or you were driving or a friend was driving 
And whether they lost control or they hit a patch of ice or snow or they hydroplaned or there was an accident and the car got pummeled, but you survived. That was a burning bush and you did not know it. Well, the doctor told you that cancer should have taken you out. Your kidneys should have shut down. You should have OD'd. You did OD and they brought you back, whatever it was. Your mother told you that you should have died in the womb or as a baby you were sick, but you are still here. You had a burning bush and didn't know it. So I say to each one of you, the divine encounter of God is not necessarily that you need some great encounter right now. Some of you have seen him and did not know it. He was there the whole time. Moses looked aside and the bush was burning. And the Bible says he turned aside to see. I want to say to some of you, God keeps interrupting your world, but you just don't slow down long enough to turn aside to see. Moses stopped and investigated. If he had not investigated, the bush would have still been on fire. God would have still been in it. He just would not have known it. The fact that you didn't know it was God does not mean it wasn't God. He was in the bush before Moses knew he was in the bush. The divine encounters of God that lead you to a deeper understanding of him, to transition to a greater relationship with God, to transition to greater peace, to transition into greater identity, begins with the recognition that you just need to stop and look over your life and ask the spirit right now, were there some burning bushes? Were you calling me? Were you trying to talk to me? And I just never knew it was you. Show me where you spoke to me before. Some of you who have learned how to live under your own strength you keep saying it was that lucky streak. I just got lucky. I, I just made it out. Were you lucky or did he just light a bush on fire trying to show you his mercy, his grace, his goodness? That one in a lifetime opportunity. Did you meet your wife or your husband because you're so smart, so handsome, so good looking, so beautiful? Or did God just light a bush on fire? because he knew it would be a good family together. You might have some struggles, but he let you. You were on a bus and you saw someone who would never give you the time of day and now y'all are married and have a family. You were in the gym working out and she's never looked at you before. He's never looked at you before, but now y'all have been together for how many years? You were in the middle of dating someone else and all of a sudden you looked up and saw them and your eyes caught each other's eyes and now God has given you a beautiful relationship. You were meeting at a wedding or a anniversary or a funeral. God lit a bush on fire just to change your world and you've never even stopped to tell him thank you because you didn't know it was him. The divine encounter of God, God was talking to you. He's been doing good things for you. He's been helping you and blessing you. He's been interrupting your world to show you his kindness. And because you never knew that bush was from the hand of God, you kept walking by it every day and never acknowledged. If I would stand here and think about God's kindness, God will talk to me. Every memorial in your life, every testimony, every good thing that you can think back over, if you will meditate on it and begin to recognize that God was in it, he'll talk to you out of that encounter. If you think about how you didn't die in that accident, if you think about how you won those awards that other people were smarter than you, but you just happened to know all the information that day, if you think about how you got that contract, and you weren't the best company putting forth the best idea, but somehow God will let you get it, and he's prospered you through it. If you just said, God, I thank you, this might have been you, so let me say thank you. 
you're going to start to hear him say, I'll give you more. I'll show you new ideas. I'll teach you how to prosper. I'll show you how to advance. I'll give you creativity. But God only speaks where God is acknowledged. You first have to acknowledge the bush was burning because of God. And then be still and let him speak. Be still and listen to the voice of God. A glorious divine encounter. I know this seems so simple to so many of you, but I think it's the lost art in the church right now. That in a world where we're looking for great, great miracles so that we can all be the one to say, look at what he's done for me. We miss the small, glorious encounters where he lights bushes on fire in front of us. A friend of mine was talking one day and they made this statement. They said, I, I was asking God to save my, my son and he hasn't gotten saved yet. And I just am so frustrated. I said, I understand you're frustrated because you've been praying for your son for 20 years to be born again. And he's gotten mixed up on drugs and he's having a hard time. I said, but I have one question for you. And they said, what? I said, you remember about 10 years ago when you called me and said, pray for him. He fell off the back porch because he was drunk. And um, they thought he had broken his neck when he hit the ground. They said, yeah. I said, and we prayed. And when you got to the hospital, he was sitting up talking and he had bruises on his shoulder and on his head and he had a bump, but nothing was broken. Yeah. I said, God was talking to him then. I said, you remember when he was so high that time and he disappeared and y'all couldn't find him. I said, and then suddenly we prayed and that night he was sitting on your front porch and he said, Mama, can I come home? And you let him in the house and y'all laid hands on him and prayed for him and you fed him. Yeah, I said, God was talking to him then. I said, you're frustrated that God hasn't done what you wanted, but you never stopped to thank God for what he was doing. Your child could have died. They could have disappeared. They could have been missing forever. But God lit a bush on fire and spoke to you. What did he say? He said, I'm still working. Don't give up on your child. I'm still merciful. I'm not going to let them die. I'm still helping them. It's not over. God was saying to them then, if you could just believe I'm able. Your marriage isn't perfect yet, but you used to fight for weeks. Now you only fight a couple of days. You used to throw dishes at each other's heads. Now you just throw words around. You used to threaten divorce. Now you just threaten a movie they don't like. And you're upset that they're not perfect, but baby, God is burning bushes in front of you if you could just recognize he's working. And if you could start to thank him that he's working, he will accelerate his hand. He will speed up his power. He will cause his glory to be seen for the Lord is waiting for you to do what Moses did. And he turned aside to see. <laughs> There's something that happens when you stop looking for the next thing and you look at what God is doing. When you stop telling God what you're looking for and you start thanking God for what you currently see, there's something that happens when you go from complaining to praising. And if you could just tell God, thank you, you keep lighting bushes on fire in front of me. Thank you. You keep visiting my family and helping my world. Thank you. I haven't made a million dollars yet, but you made sure we ate good every week. I haven't paid for all my kids to go to college, but Lord, we're not on the street. I haven't been able to buy that beautiful car I want, but oh, I got enough money for the bus. Thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to help me at all. So for the bushes, you keep burning. For the ways you keep making. For the doors you keep opening. For the mercy you keep sharing. For the hope you keep sending. For the power you keep releasing, I from my soul say thank you. That's what I am supposed to pour out to you on this third installment of transition. So I call you right now, wherever you are in transition, to recognize the divine encounter of God 
may not be what you thought it was, but it's been happening your whole life. So right now in your world, this episode, this podcast, we're going to end this one by you lift up your hands in your own house. If you're driving, throw one up. Keep the other one on the wheel, baby. Keep one up. We're not paying for your insurance, so keep one hand up. Keep the other one on the wheel. If you are walking, throw them up while you're taking your walk, while you're jogging. And just say, God, I thank you. Lord, you've been taking care of me. I thank you. Right now, mothers and fathers, tell the Lord, thank you. I don't care what condition your children are in. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how strung out they are or how upset they are, or they might all be home loving God, but they're just not doing what you want. Whatever it is, God, I thank you that my children are alive. I thank you. Somebody buried a child today. Yours is still in your house. Somebody had to bury their parents. And if yours are still alive, you need to call them today. And no matter what issues you have, call them and say, I thank God you're still in the earth. And I bless you. If you've got brothers and sisters, no matter if you're estranged or not, they don't have to see like you see. They haven't watched the bush burn, but you have understood he's lighting bushes on fire in front of you. So call your brother and sister today and say to them, I know it's been a while since we talked, but I just want to tell you from my heart, I love you. I don't want anything from you. I just need you to know today I love you. And I thank God you're in my life. That's how we go deeper. That's how we go further. Appreciate, acknowledge, and bless. May the Lord God Almighty, who is in charge of all things, cause you to see that your pain was not without power, that your trouble will bring transition, and that the fear of yesterday has brought you to the faith of your future. And in transition, you will not be held hostage any longer, waiting for others to see what you see. But you have seen God on the mountain. You know he's real. You know he's there. You know he's good and you know he's present. So out of your own world, we choose today to come together in faith and we lift up our faith and we say, God, do for our family and our friends Do for those in our world what you have done for us. Open their eyes and let them see you have been with them all along. May the Lord God Almighty give you new perspective, new discernment, new understanding. May he increase your peace, deepen your joy, and may he cause you to laugh when others are weeping, to be strong when others are broken. And to remember, if God be for you, he's more than a world against you. Walk, Moses. The Lord is on your side. This has been Prophetic Edge with Michael Dalton. If this episode has blessed you, please consider sharing it with someone. For more information, ministry dates, and to sow into the ministry, please visit yes-ministries.com.